Recently, we've been discussing partial fraction decomposition, and, and we understand now its kind of its main goal or main objective, which is to take a big, ugly rational expression and decompose it or break it apart into a sum of smaller rational expressions, right? And so just walking through those steps one, one more time very quickly, uh, if we had a function that was a, a, that was a rational expression, where you have a numerator polynomial divided by a denominator polynomial, we'll call them n and d so that we can remember them, then here, here's how we're going to decompose this guy in theory. We're going to first of all factor the denominator because the, the way the decomposition looks depends on what the factors look like in the denominator. Now once we factor the denominator, then we can make up what I like to call a template of what the decomposition is going to look like depending on if those factors were like linear or quadratic or if they were, were repeated factors with a high power or not repeated where the exponent was one, that sort of thing. But we can write a template of the decomposition. Uh, and then when we're done, we can find the unknown constants in the numerator uh, which would fill out or complete the template. Uh, because initially when you write the template, you have something like a over something plus b over something plus c over something. And that's kind of the, the missing step. And in fact, that's what we're going to talk about in this video, this last step, uh, finding these unknown a's and b's and c's, finding the constants which are, which are in your numerators of your template uh, for the decomposition. Okay. All right. Now, there's two typical ways that are taught how to find students are taught how to find these uh, these constants that are in the numerator um, one way uh, one of the traditional ways is to use systems right there's a there's a way and and we're not really going to get into too much of these details for for this method in this video but there's a way that you can construct a system uh, where you have multiple equations with A's and B's and C's, etc. So, if, for instance, if you had an A and a B that were unknown, then you would get a system of two variables or two unknowns and two equations, and you could solve for the A or the B, and there's a, a way you can set up a system to do that. If you had an A and a B and a C, you could construct a system with three equations with three unknowns, and it would allow you to solve for the A, the B, and the C. This method is traditionally taught in like a college algebra class um, because uh, it's usually taught in the chapter on systems. And so it's a good practical use of systems. But if you're doing this in a calculus class, it's a little bit different. We don't really care too much about systems. We just want the answer. We just want to know what the A and the B and the C are uh, without using systems. You could also use matrices, which ties together with systems. Um, so it's, it's uh, a good technique to learn uh, more about matrices as well. But usually in a calculus class like we're in, uh, all that's all that's a, a moot point. We don't, we don't really care too much about the systems. We just want to know what the A is, what the B is, what the C is and let's be done with it. Uh, so it turns out there is also a shortcut. Now you usually won't see this shortcut in your college algebra class. Sometimes I'll go ahead and teach it to the students anyway, just to kind of uh, speed it up or, or allow them to check their work or that sort of thing. But it doesn't use systems and it's a little bit quicker. Uh, rather than write out some formal steps, I think I'll just show you how this shortcut works. All right, so let's say we had an example like this. Um, we're trying to decompose it. So what, what will we do first? Well, I have n of x over d of x, and step one was to factor this denominator here. Okay, uh, if you can. It's not always possible, but if we can. So let's see, does this guy factor? I think he does. It would be an x and an x, and it would be a minus 4 uh, plus 1, right? Minus 4 plus 1. And so this would, this would be the factored form of this uh, denominator here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this. I'm going to put this in its place. Okay, so there we go. We have x minus 4 times x plus 1. <coughs> Excuse me. And the next step will be to write the decomposition. This is that, that part that depends on what your denominator factors look like. Both of these are linear factors. So if you watch that video on how to handle linear factors, then you would know that this guy contributes a term to the decomposition, namely a over x minus 4. And this guy contributes one term to the decomposition, b over x plus 1. 
Now, why did they only contribute one term and not two terms or three terms individually? Well, that has to do with these powers. See, this is x minus 4 to the first power. This is x plus 1 to the first power. If this had been the second or third or fourth power, there would have been, you know, some additional terms, you know, coming up after these two, right? But, uh, but this right here is what I would call my template, right? This is the, what I call the template of the decomposition. But there's still a problem. I have no idea what the A and the B are. I don't, I don't know what they are. All right, so that's what we're going to talk about how to find. I'm going to show you a shortcut. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Let's, let's actually write this out as, uh, as one straight line going straight across. I'll tell you what, I'll just do it on this card. I'll probably speed things up a little bit rather than flip back and forth uh, between the two different cards. Okay, so I'll tell you what, I'll just jot it up here in the corner real quick. We'd have a over x minus 4 plus b over x plus 1. Okay, so the first step, and you can make yourself little notes. I'm not going to write down all of these individual notes, but the first step is to get rid of the fractions by multiplying by the least common denominator. You're probably familiar with the LCD from like your algebra classes, but I need the lowest common denominator or least common denominator between x minus 4 times x plus 1, x minus 4, and x plus 1. And it's pretty clear that it's going to be this guy, right? Now, here's a little hint. The LCD for this type of template will always be this denominator on the left because think about it. That's where all these other guys came from. They're the decomposed terms from this denominator. So you don't usually have to think too hard about this step. This uh, guy in the uh, left-hand denominator will, will always be your um, LCD. So we're going to multiply that LCD through to both sides, and that'll get rid of our fraction. So let's do that. Multiply the left side by x minus 4 times x plus 1. These cancel, cancel, and you'll get negative 2x plus 23 uh, equal to when you distribute the LCD to this term, the x minus 4s cancel, but you still have an a, and you still have an x plus 1. When you distribute the LCD to this term, the b stays, the x plus 1s cancel, and you'll be left with an x minus 4 this time. All right, so we get this equation, but it's not an equation like you would traditionally think. This is not an equation that has right answers and wrong answers. This is this is what's called an identity. This should always be equal to this. And here's the key words for all x values, right? It should be true for all x values, not some, but all x values. So what that means is we can plug in any x that we want, and this should be should stay true. It's not true only for certain x's. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to be smart about this. This is clever. We're going to pick a specific x value, right? But we're going to pick it in a smart way. Can you think of an x value such that when you plugged it in, it would make either the a or the b disappear? I think I can think of two. I think negative one would be a good one because that would give you a times zero. Or I think uh, four would be a good x value because you would get b times zero. Four minus four is zero. And so either one of those would be good. Let's try that. If x was negative one, let's do the math. Negative two times negative one is uh, positive two. Two and 23 make 25. And this would be zero, right? That'll, that would be gone. And negative one minus four makes negative 5b. Well, you know, bam, automatically we see b must be negative 5, right? Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. Wow, that was so that was so nice and simple and easy. No systems, no matrices, just a nice little shortcut noticing that this was an identity that was always true for any x. Uh, now let's do that other x we were talking about, x equals 4. Let's do the same thing. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Uh, 23 minus 8. 23 minus 8 would be 15. And then on the uh, right-hand side, 
we'd have four plus one is five, so we'd have five A, five A, and so A equals 15 over five, which is three. So fast, right, so quick. Uh, and that, that's the A and the B, or what A and B should, should be in the decomposition. So here's what we can do next. We can come up here, um, we can erase this A and this B, or you can just write a new line. You, you don't have to just keep erasing or whatnot. You can write a new line, but I, I'm just gonna write it right here. Um, if this is A, then I'm gonna take the A out and put a three in its place. And if B is negative five, I'll put minus five right there, right? And we're done, that's the decomposition. That's the last step, that's how we find the specific numerators. Now, in a, in a bigger sense, what was the ultimate goal again? I've, I've said this in most of our videos, but I'll say it again here. The ultimate goal of what we're gonna try to do in calculus is somebody will be asking us to integrate this big, ugly, rational expression. Well, rather than do that, wouldn't we much rather integrate these two easy terms, right? So decomposing makes integration so much easier because the terms are so much smaller. So uh, that's the main idea of partial fraction decomposition. Now we know how to set up the cases, right, for the template, and we can find the constants in the numerator. So I think we are ready to roll. Um, so hopefully, anyways, hope that helped you understand partial fraction decomposition just a little bit better.